Hey everybody, this is Steve of Steve and Jennifer at the Common Milkweed, and I'm doing part two of, well, maybe part two of three, but at least part two of two of the using water totes to irrigate our uh, nursery plants. So last time I left off with um, how am I going to get water from these tanks to the plants, and so what I've got here is a ball valve and various fittings to get me down to I uh, screw on standard garden hose two-way splitter because then I can uh, hook a garden hose in it which I have <clears throat> goes over here to this contraption I got from a friend, which includes a inline filter, a flow regulator, which I don't even know if I need, I don't think I do, a pressure gauge, which I don't think works because it didn't register anything. And so that, that stuff needs some work, but I tried it without that and I got about the same flow rate. But at least the filter is helpful. And then I go into this pump which is a 12 volt DC transfer pump. Here's the model number. It's a Harbor Freight Drummond model 63324. Again, 12 volt DC. It's supposed to pump about 290 gallons per hour through a three foot, gar three quarter inch garden hose. I've actually got a half inch garden hose so I'm probably limited somewhat but I was just testing this to see if it works and it does. The pump comes with a switch which is handy because I've just got it direct clipped to a 12 volt battery that I got from uh, that I had left over because I replaced the batteries in our rechargeable push mower so I had these batteries sitting around and I thought hey why don't I just charge these up see if it'll hold a charge long enough to test this system uh, before I buy anything else and it works so the thing with this pump is it doesn't have a uh, pressures uh, I'm trying to think of the uh, it doesn't have a switch where you can um, where it senses uh, when you're turning on your water hose so it doesn't switch on and off automatically so I'm going to rectify that but just for testing I basically leave the flow open on the outlet watering hose and then when I turn on the pump it's fine. If I didn't have that open and I turn on the pump it would probably burn up the pump in short order so something to pay attention to but I'm going to turn it on. It's kind of loud then I'll back away from the pump and you'll see. So there's the flow, which isn't incredible, but my hose is kind of kinked, so I am limited a little bit. But you can see a seven-line of water to water container plants, which is what we were wanting to do. Okay, so I leave it run so that it doesn't burn up the pump. It gives me an opportunity to turn the, the switch off. So right now, that's good enough for testing. So the plants that we're watering are on these four tables, which are four by eight tables, there's four of them, which is more plants than you think because these are, a lot of these are perennial wildflowers that of course don't take up a bunch of space because we have them in small uh, containers. So these are Kentucky coffee tree, those will, will need to be up potted. So those will end up taking up more space, but that's okay. We can put them on the ground. Uh, in watering this, these four tables, it took about, I don't know, not, not much more than 10 minutes, and it didn't drop the water level uh, in these tanks that I could tell from the naked eye. So obviously it used water, but it wasn't like it used a lot. So if these were full, I'm guesstimating that I could water these plants in their current numbers and volume of media after up potting 
probably all I need to if it was a normal summer of rain. So that's awesome. That's what we want to know. The goal here was to set this up quickly, inexpensively, and with a minimum of supplies to, to test if it's going to work. So step the next step is I'm going to set up a solar panel with probably a charge controller and, and all that stuff and probably get a switch, a pressure switch for that pump so that it, that when I turn the water on and off at the at the wand, at the watering wand it senses that and turns the pump on and off which would be not entirely necessary but very handy and would minimize wasting water walking back and forth from the switch to turn it on and off. So that's it for now. Everything's a-okay. This thing passes the test of it works. It's simple. A lot of people cover these um, totes up with uh, paint them or cover them with plastic. We're not going to do that. We don't care if we get a little bit of algae. Uh, these are on the north side of a building so this, the sun uh, doesn't affect them up a lot somewhat but we also have a lot of plants that shade them and so for now we're going to just uh, monitor the algae and see how that goes um, and over time just refine this setup uh, in places that it needs to be refined uh, for now we're just hoping for another good rain to top these four tanks off which will be 275 gallons times four tanks so that's what, uh, not quite 1,200 gallons. I guess that would be 1,100 gallons, something like that. Which is pretty good for 30 bucks a tank and the pump cost about 40 bucks. A lot of this other stuff I got for free from people. So not bad uh, to, to give this a go if it works great after more lengthy testing we can always add on more tanks in series but for now I think this is probably going to be enough uh, to do what we have and it works good with a bit of refining it'll work great and uh, the refinements I'll document in watering the nursery with garden rainwater collected in garden totes part three <laughs>